All right, time for a little road trip. All loaded up. Let's get those back to the homestead and get them to good use. This thing comes in so handy. We made it home. The sun is setting, so this is where we're gonna stop for right now. But we're gonna be right back in the morning. Would you look at the sky and then the moon? Where is it? It's somewhere. All right, so I'm gonna pick the camera up in the morning. I'll see you right there. Well, the egg layers are ready to get moved to new fresh pasture this morning. They love the fresh grass. You wouldn't think they would, but chickens love it. Let me show you. This is what it looks like after they move. That's what it looked like before. And that's what happens during the day. They eat that grass down so good, scratch it, fertilize it, get all the bugs off of it. And that's like a week later. And that'll get even better as time goes on. So this is what it looks like. And that's after and down there. Chickens are so efficient at sanitizing our pastures and fertilizing them. And then we get eggs or meat. So it's a win-win all the way around. They pay for themselves pretty much doing this part of the job. And the bonus is the eggs or the meat. So I can get these ladies moved, get them onto some fresh grass and continue on. So I went out and picked up Crete Heat last night, which is a foam board we're gonna be putting down. We're gonna be heating this shop with radiant heat. So the Crete Heat is a foam board that has like, kind of looks like a Lego base. So you can put your PEX tube right in it and you don't need to staple it down. It's the foam to heat it. It has a plastic covering over it. So it is the vapor barrier and it holds the PEX. So it's a little bit more expensive than regular foam board, but you don't have to buy anything else for it. Like if you put foam board down, you're still supposed to put a vapor barrier down. So this has that in there and then it has a way for all of the pecs to stay in place, which is really handy. So we need to go around, mark a foot on each corner, and then we're gonna mark a line. We're gonna keep the foam in a foot, so that way we get two inches thicker on the footing side of concrete, and we're not really worried about, we're not gonna have the pecs that close to the edge anyways, because if we ever gotta screw anything in to the outside wall, we don't want pecs there. So we just need to get this layout laid out and then we can stop putting down the Crete heat. If you didn't use the Crete heat, how would you even keep the pecs in place? If you didn't use Crete heat, I've seen people put down like it's like a chicken wire or almost like a cattle panel, but really thin wire. They put that down and then they go ahead and they put the pecs on that and then they have to zip tie the pecs to the chicken wire. And then you gotta raise that wire up off of the bottom of the foam for some reason. So it's a really pain in the butt. And then I've seen other people go around and staple it into the foam, but the staples don't always stay in. Like they can pick up and pull. So this is the most convenient and easy way. What? I got myself tangled uh, up on this. You better stop spraying before you get to me. You don't want to be pink? No. Perfect. I like it. I didn't even get any pink on me. I just got a little bit more from the string. Yeah, I think the string, but. You wanna reel that string up. I'll let you get pink on you. Well, I just said I didn't get any pink on me, so now you want me to get pink on me. Yep, I gotta share it with you. I don't wanna be the only one in pink. Unfortunately, yesterday, before we put the front on, I didn't take out the plate compactor. We'll get it out with the old TYM.
wasn't too sure how this load was gonna do coming back, but it stayed on there pretty good. We didn't lose anything, and I didn't even have to stop and tighten it up. We used this Crete heat in the house, and it works so good. That house heats awesome and is so efficient. I wanted to use it on the shop because in the long run, it's gonna save us money in our heating bills. We live up north and it gets cold. We can see negative 20, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So we wanna make the shop as efficient as we can so that way we're not wasting energy. We don't wanna keep it super warm, but we wanna be able to keep it warm enough so when we're in there, we're working. It's comfortable. Gina had a run in for a few minutes, but once she gets back out here and we start everything going, it's gonna go quick. I'm gonna get the corners started and get that layout figured out. And then once we have two people out here, I'll probably just basically be running these packages over here, opening them up and that's the goal. We're gonna find out. All right, let me show you guys what we're working with. So this is why I call it a Lego board. That's what it reminds me of being green and having these little nubs, but it's interlocking. So one piece will sit over here, lock in, and that's got the plastic on it, which is your vapor barrier. And then this makes it so our pecs can run in here and locks in place. So we'll get this laid out. One bag already used up. So we need to stagger our joints like halfway-ish. So I already went ahead and I started working on our other one while I was waiting for the saw, but they're easy to cut. So I'm just gonna go two feet. So we're gonna go right on that mark. I say it's marked too, so. Right, they got grids on it. The leftover piece I can use down the other end. That's why I like working with this stuff. Super simple. Vapor barrier is there. You don't gotta worry about putting a sheet of plastic down and having the wind blow it around on you. And then this holds all the pecs. It's like building a workshop out of Legos. A little bit longer, but that'll work just fine. So we didn't go around and backfill all of our forms yet, just in case we get rain. I don't want this to hold water in here. I want to be able to shed the water. So once it gets closer to concrete time, then I'll go around and I'll backfill these areas a lot better. I might put the sand up here 
because I got to get it out of the way when we get more material in, but I'm not going to get it nice and tight up against the forms just yet. I had to stop and put sunglasses on because this stuff is bright and it messes with your eyeballs staring at it. So it's one of the tricks we weren't la it's one of the tricks we learned last time is wear sunglasses. You feel a lot better. So I'll cut one more of these in half and get this going for this one. You building Legoland? I've never been a big Lego person until now. Right. Or and when we did the house. The house heats so nice with these things. I just wonder why green. I know, right? I don't know. Yeah, the house stays so warm. And it feels so nice. Right, and it doesn't take much to heat it. I know this is a shop, but it helps gonna keep it warmer, fat, easier. And cost less to heat it. Right. All right, I gotta make sure I keep you supplied. I don't want you running out, slowing down production. I think you could get me a chair, the umbrella. No, the no, no. We got work this guy get done. Well, in between waiting for you, I'm saying. Here it is. Oh, throwing stuff around now. Channel your inner kung fu. Hey, I want to do that. Oh, now you want my job? Now that I made it look fun? Yeah. Uh, you don't need till the next one. It wasn't even time for you to do that yet. No, I know. I like to be ahead of you. Yep. All right, we gotta stop for a second. As much as I don't want to, huh? I gotta, I gotta, we gotta take some of that apart and we gotta hump. All right, I was hoping it was my imagination, but it's not. We have a little bit of a hump right here. You can see it right there in camera. And I don't like that because that means the concrete's gonna be really thin on that edge. It's just that spot. It's only probably like six inches or 18 inches wide. So we gotta take out that creed heat. I'll get over there with the tractor. I'll back drag it and then we'll shovel it out. It's really packed over there. So we gotta back drag it, loosen it up, get it out. And it's just, I don't know, it's probably like a 10 or 20 foot long section. We'll take care of that and then we can continue on. That's the only high spot that I'm seeing. And I was hoping my eyes were playing a trick on me, but they're not. About this one.
All right, we'll give that a try. The hard part is I can't just get in there and rake it because we have that compacted so tight that you can't just kind of rake it out. So now it's loosened up, we can rake it and shovel it. But eyeballing it, it looks pretty good. Now you move that little bit of wood right there, I mean that side wall, do you gotta fix it? Yeah, if it's still, once we get all those stones out, if it's still bowed, we'll fix it. Okay. All right, that should do it. You ready to get your Lego puzzle piece back together and then we can continue going on. I'm gonna say we're about halfway done. I think once this row gets finished up, the excavator operator would have done this right the first time. We would have probably been done with all of our Crete heat what by now. Heck? We don't have to fire the guy. Jeez. Talking about the mini excavator operator. The mini excavator operator, yeah. No good. I get to be the Kung Fu Master again. Hiya! So we're over halfway done. We got like two bundles over there left and then five right here. Now, if this isn't enough, I don't know what went wrong. I just always hate getting down to this part going, do I have enough? My guess is, is we need like four or four and a half more rows to finish. And we've got enough to do two, maybe three. So we're gonna be like one bag, maybe two bags short. But I'd rather know that now. Go run out and get them, and then we can finish it up. I'll go cut some, I guess. Yeah, because that's my next thing. That's your next thing. Did you, you do my? Yeah, it's pretty cool. We don't have to cut it at all. I know. Is that the last? These are the last two pieces. Uh, Here, take this I one. I was hoping you were wrong. We'll need one, two, so one, two, let's do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that'll be seven. So if I get two bags, that'll be 16. And then I'll have one or two left over. Okay, so whatever we do, we need to have a little extra every time. Yep. Well, at least I got to go for a nice air conditioned ride and cool off. I'll look at the plus side. Look at that, one big stone just keeps that whole end up. That's all it is. You're real quiet, you can hear it. it just must be getting warmed up for the sun and it just kicked. 
from looking down from the house. This is a big green pad. So you're definitely gonna be able to see this building. So that'd be pretty cool. It all flows together. It's gonna be awesome. You hear it? Making the noise? Yep. It almost sounds like rain. The sun warming it up. We need five, we'll get ten. Now right. we're done. Here we go, last piece. Just like that. Now we got a sea of green and we can hear it. So, even though it don't look like it right now, we are fighting the rain. The rain's gonna be here shortly so we don't have enough time to get all of the pecs done right this minute. So we are going to put some rebar on the foam just to hold it down. And then I need to take care of the side of the road here. It's one of the big reasons I want to stop. The side of the road is humped up with stone from the dump truck going in and compacting where his tires kept going. So I want to get that cut back so that the road is more crowned. So if we do get rain, it doesn't run down the road and sit. It runs off and goes that way. Because I want to make sure this all stays nice and dry. We don't want it getting muddy because when the concrete trucks come in here, we don't need them sinking. They weigh more than the dump truck. So we don't want one of them getting stuck. So I wanna make sure this is all cut back so the water can run away from or out of the new road and not pool up in it. So let me go grab the rebar. I'll set some rebar on this so it doesn't blow away on us. And then we can fix that up before the rain comes in. At least the weather says it's supposed to rain. Right. We gotta be prepared for it. Yes, because we haven't, that hasn't been wrong. It maybe won't rain, right. but if it says it's going to rain, well, I don't even know. They don't know. They don't know either. I don't know. But we just gotta make sure we're ready for the rain so it doesn't mess up our plans too bad. side of the road cleaned up and see if we can get the water flowing the way we want it to.
we have most of the sand used up. We got it all piled up on the edges. I'm not going to spread it out because that rain is coming in, or so they say. So we don't want to completely backfill. We want to be able to have room for it to drain if we get a lot of water. Time will tell. Got everything smoothed out and ready. We're going to be needing more gravel brought in. So I want to make sure everything was ready. If they can come tomorrow with more, we'll be ready for them. I got the road looking pretty good. If I get a chance, I'm going to get that compacted again. But if not, I am happy with the way it's looking. It'd be nice if the rain wasn't coming in. I'm not complaining. It'd just be nice if we weren't getting any rain because it's starting to dry up down here. Really nice over here. It's drying up really nice. I want to shape it a little bit better, but I hate to shape it if we're going to be getting a bunch of rain because it might get messed up. So I'm better off leaving it out of shape but and then come back after, shape it. Then we can get it seeded, get grass growing over there. I don't want to get grass in the slower spot growing yet, but we could get grass growing up on the higher spot in the bank. Don't worry, Figaro is coming down to keep an eye on me. Well, as much as I use that plate compactor, you guys probably think it's my favorite job. It's not, it's one of my least favorite jobs, but I know it works. That's why I try to get it done even when I don't want to. And also, you probably don't believe me that we just got five inches of rain last week with how dry and dusty it is right now. And they're calling for more. So, at least it's dried out on the top in most of the spots before we get more rain.